Hi there guys, I hope we're all keeping well. Today's video is going to be about Greyhound Racing. Now Greyhound Racing isn't really explained much about in match betting and I'll probably give the answer to that in this video. Now there's three main dangers with Greyhound Racing, right? And in this video I'll go over that and what to expect and what happens when there is a non-runner. Now this is the main danger in my opinion and you know it's pretty obvious why which I'll explain about. So I'm going to make a Greyhound playlist on my YouTube channel. This is my YouTube channel here in the playlist. If you ever stuck for anything there's almost everything on here you can find if you ever scan through there. So I'll try and organize it a bit. But with Greyhound racing if there's a non-runner it's a lot different to in horse racing when there's a non-runner. When there's a non-runner in horse racing there's a thing called Tattersall's Rule 4 and there's another thing called Betfair Formula. Now the Betfair Formula will calculate a price that your horse will be deducted by if it's successfully laid. So let's say we laid something in a horse race, we laid this one here in a horse race and this dotty dot was a non-runner. In a horse race that will the lay will still remain in the race but it'll be calculated. But in dog racing, if Dotty Dot was a non-runner in this, even if you've successfully laid this Sal Hakers Badger, that will be cancelled, that bet. And this is where the big problem lies with Greyhound betting. Because say Dotty Dot weren't running for whatever reason, you've now got a five dog race. And the biggest problem with this, excuse my alarm, that's a horse race. God, it ruins my life that does, these alarms. The biggest problem with this is that the disparity between dog racing SP prices, which is a starting price, and the Betfair prices is absolutely massive. I think that, um, apart from correct scores on football and some other markets, Greyhound Racing in particular is one of them. One of those um, big differences between an exchange and between the SP that the bookies offer, right? So it's usually far bigger odds. I've even seen it on Greyhound Racing when the place which is to come first or second, is the same as the win price for a horse to win, for a greyhound to win. So what I'm getting at here is if you've successfully laid this Sal Hakers Badger and you come back later on and it's just before the race and Dotty Dot is withdrawn, you've now got to dec decide now, are you going to just let it ride? Are you going to lay it and lose part of your stake before, you even, um, before it even runs? Are you going to cash out with a bookie if they give that option? Or are you just going to lay half or something? But whatever choice you make, 90% plus percent of the time, you're going to lose money. Now, when that happens with a non-runner, you'll lose, right? 90% of the time. So that's why I would recommend people avoid it with your match betting. Um, but there are pros. Another con with... Um, with Greyhound racing and match betting is liquidity. Now, liquidity doesn't really gather until about the last three minutes. You've got all different types of Greyhound racing. Um, if we go into the racing post, this here is a Nottingham RPG TV race. These are probably the most liquid races. Now, these are always in the evening, and these and things called open races have the most liquidity now prior to rpg tv this channel was formed around 2009 2010 and they've done very well for getting liquidity into greyhound racing and giving exposure to average joe soap out there so this is where i go if i want to have a look at the dog form by the way dog form is a bit different to horse racing form we usually go by the times and these a3 races a1 is the highest and say a I think it goes up to A13 is the lowest, but I'm waffling there. The racing posts do do good race, um, grey, greyhound form, and Yarmouth have also got greyhound racing on tonight. But it's these meetings like this, and the things called open races. Now, the open races are like, like horse racing when you see class one, class two, that kind of thing. They're the top races, and these are the ones that get the most liquidity. But if you've got the usual races, which are bags races, they're called, during the day, then you won't find liquidity building up until about three or four minutes before the race. The trouble with that is the markets are moving so fast. By the time you put your bet on with the bookie and go to lay it, it can change. 
I know this happens in horse racing, but it changes a lot quicker because the market's window is a lot shorter and you're gen generally dicing with danger. Now, if we look at this RPG TV race tonight, now it's, what day is it? I don't even know what day. It's Monday today, so there's not much going on. Like 6.41 at Nottingham, if we go on here. This, by the way, is Odds Checker. Back in the day before Odds Matches, we would just come on to Odds Checker and compare it versus Betfair. Smart kits do do greyhounds, but they haven't got these markets at the moment. I prefer Betfair, pay 2%. And you've got more liquidity, I've found anyway. It's just my opinion. This here is an Arb, I suppose, 2.36. But let's say you was going to lay that back it was Sky Bet. Um, you could lay that in there. But like I said, if there's a non-runner, you're going to come unstuck. If you ever need to calculate these conversions of odds, like we see there, it was 11 to 8. I've got three match betting calculators on my site. This fractions and conversions one. I don't personally need this stuff before myself, but some newbies might the uh, you get the hang of it after a while 2.38 you see so that's a slight arp although i wouldn't recommend arbing dog racing at all but what my point here is is that there's not much liquidity even though um these are the top races in comparison with um in comparison with bags races like this one here 4.3 4.4 if you click this little button here it tells you what um what has been backed and laid and someone's had 12 pound there at 3.8 12 pound at 3.95 yet with bet 365 it's seven or two which is 4.5 um so that's a slight up there but like i said i definitely wouldn't recommend arbin greyhounds it's the quickest way to gubsville but if you sat there on an afternoon during these bags dog races these here are bags dog races mon more romford and it's, they're very frequent, these races. You could find arbs all day long, in the afternoon and the evening. But you will get gubbed. But back in the day, you didn't used to get gubbed like that. You, you could sit here, shelling peas, bang, 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 making money. You would get gubbed eventually, but you didn't get gubbed, I would say, nearly five times as quick as you do nowadays. So RPG TV, in my opinion, have been the ones to get liquidity into these races that are not open races the only way liquidity were was big before is if it was an open race and you can see these are all called graded races i'll do another video on graham racing if you want to know specifics details about it because i used to frequent graham racing graham tracks a lot um back in the 90s walthamstow was probably my favorite dog track back then i don't know why they closed it um but it is possible to back and lay with greyhounds but you've got these dangers so all in all i would just leave it alone my missus even <laughs> i went for a period i said to my missus look you've got to have a word with me right to check i don't do these dogs because these bloody non-runners keep happening to me all the time they're fine as long as they don't the non-runners don't happen but i bet you the non-runners will happen at some point at some point in time it's inevitable so that's the biggest worry the only positives you've got with greyhound racing of course the same as um, horse racing is if you do it with a bookmaker that entitles you to a bog you can get the bog on it so we all love a bit of bog don't we you know the i've had some really big bogs on them um, on greyhound racing because of the volatility with with the markets if you ever traded greyhound markets they're very like horse racing markets but they're very skitty you know they're up and down you can have a dog price run away with you faster in my opinion than a horse race because I just think that, that smaller window of time creates more chaos. So in a nutshell, the biggest worry is the non-runners. Um, I showed you the Greyhound card here. If you want a um, video on how to read Greyhound form and stuff like that, I can, I can do that. Also, if you've got any ideas of some other videos, guys, I can do a video on almost anything with betting, not just match betting. I find match betting a little bit boring and that, but people it's, it's the most popular at the moment even though it's fizzling out a bit so don't forget to comment like subscribe the video if you've got any um any ideas for videos let me know the member site i was going to bring out this year i might be bringing it out later in the year of course there's been a lot of delays at my end i might have be having a commute soon um so it's delayed for the moment but i'm looking to do it at the end of the year if not 2021 but I hope everyone else has been well. 
leave down in the comments how you've been getting on with your betting and stuff and also some ideas for videos guys but in a nutshell don't play with them dogs but the the other thing I like about Graham Racing is if you're one of them people that is a full timer or something, you're sitting there all day long doing horse racing, it's nice to have a bit of Graham Racing as well as to compliment your, your football in the evenings, especially in the summer when there's no football. That's the only other positive about Graham Racing, but do it and see, give me some feedback, what you think. But as soon as that non-runner comes, don't come and ask me what to do because I'm not going to tell you. Anyway, good luck guys, all the best.